Hey, hi, my name's Lindsay and welcome to my living room. I hope that you're gonna paint along with me today as I paint this little meadow here. It's got a lot of purples and blues, just a hint of green, so it's got a little bit of a pop, but that was just my choice. Hopefully, you'll wanna do what I call going rogue and go ahead and change it to colors that you really like. What I would suggest, I'm gonna paint kind of fast today, so maybe painting on a little piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, a smaller canvas that you think you might have laying around before you do the real thing. I call it a sketch or a thumbnail. Um, this one I've already painted, this will be maybe my third time, so I'm really gonna remember the things that I liked about all the ones that I've done before, and then I'm gonna change it so that I'm gonna kinda play around with some of the colors and try to get really the painting that I think I could do better now that I've done it a few times. So I would say do this quickly with me, run through, do a sketch, thumbnail, whatever you wanna call it, and then paint it on your own, take your time, have a drink with you, and uh, go into lots more detail. This is a lot of just sort of the basics and a good starting point for anybody that's beginning and maybe just is a little bit anxious about getting some paint on canvas. The big point about doing these is it's just fun. Relax, take a nice deep breath. If you're not having a good time, take a step back, walk away from it for a second, and then come back to it. It's supposed to be fun and have a good time. Uh, while I'm doing these, I'm always thinking a lot about what I'm gonna do ahead of time. So I'm gonna try to remember to tell you what we're gonna do a couple of steps ahead of time. And then play that weird line of telling you too much is too soon. So what we're gonna use today is I'm gonna use a 16 by 20 canvas that I have repainted. Uh, I'm just gonna recycle it and go ahead and do another one. When I'm doing this one, I'm gonna use four colors. So I have my primary colors plus white. I'm not gonna use black today because when I make purple with these two, it's gonna be pretty dark already. But if you're using lighter colors, Maybe having a little bit of black on standby, like I do right here, is a good idea. Just a little hint. Uh, everybody's using different colors, but I'm using acrylic paints today. This is, if you really care about the fancy colors, phthalo blue, bright red, chrome yellow, and then titanium white. We're going to use two brushes. So I usually try to use two brushes when I'm doing these simple ones. I've got a whole caddy of a bunch of brushes over there when I do fancier stuff. So different brushes are good for different things. But today I'm using a large brush. I've got a lot of canvas to cover. So if you are using a smaller canvas, you can use a smaller brush. You don't need one as big as this one here. So this is a very large brush. And then I have a pretty small brush. Both of these, they're not the best condition. I use them for private parties when I go out and do those. But I'm gonna use them today. I want them to be a little more ratty because when I do those trees and stuff, it can kind, kind of ruin a better brush. So this is not a best quality brush kind of painting, which is really cool, especially if you're doing this along with your kids or you maybe haven't painted a long time trying to get the kinks out. Use one of those older brushes um, or a cheaper brush. Dollar Tree has some really good brushes there and they've got some cheaper kind of bigger brushes for smaller hands. Also, I have a cup of water. This one here, I like to use this same mason jar because you can tell that it's your water cup and I'm not gonna drink out of this if I try to pick this up to drink out of. So another good tip to not drink out of your water cup, always keep your brushes in the water when you're not using them unless you're gonna kind of switch back and forth and we'll talk about that later. But usually keep your brushes in the water. We're using those acrylic paints and they're technically a plastic. So we've got about two minutes before the paint becomes sort of a plastic. And if it gets on your clothes or if it stays on your brush and just sort of out on your station, it's gonna dry out. Um, and then it's kind of there forever. So you can hear it on my apron, which I obviously use as my rag. But I also have this little rag here. It's used, it's dirty, it's great. I kind of like these because they look really pretty by the time they don't absorb any more uh, water. But I'm gonna keep something to get water off of my brush handy. And then I've always got something kind of on standby in case an accident happens. Um, I've got paper towels off to the side. You can use paper towels to dry your brush. I paint pretty often, so I've just sort of got a couple of rags on standby. So I've got those and then I've got all of the colors that I'm using today. I've got some extra because I never really want to run out and come back to the painting after I've bought new paint and all that kind of stuff. So this is what my extra ones look like. I keep them pretty handy here. 
And then as I'm painting, I'm going to take a few times where I'm going to work really, really quickly to get through a couple of steps before the paint dries. And then there's a couple of steps where I can maybe take a step back and take a break. So I will try to remember to let you know when is a good time to take a break, take a break, a step back, let your paint dry, and then come back and put those other layers on. I'm not really going to do that for mine, but uh, it's a good idea to kind of take a step back every so often. We are going to start from the very, very farthest back and then sort of layer ourselves forward. So the thing farthest in the back is the sky, go figure. And I'm going to use my big brush to get that done. So what I want to do is this fun thing called the blending on canvas. I'm going to use my big brush and white paint and sort of get a nice coat of white on where I decide where my horizon line is and then all the way up to the top of the canvas. Then before my paint dries, I'm gonna grab some of that blue and then start from the top and work my way down. And that's gonna be sort of a blending on canvas sort of situation. So I've got my big brush. I have my uh, white paint. I'm gonna take a good amount of white here. I'm kind of working it into those bristles. And then deciding on the horizon line. If you don't know what a horizon line is, it's where the sky and the land are gonna meet. And today ours is gonna kind of drift around a little bit, but just somewhere to start is I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna go about one hand up the canvas and start to make these nice long horizontal lines. And I'm gonna try to cover the whole canvas from that line and up as quickly as I can. You don't have to do horizontal lines. You can do kind of crisscrossy kind of stuff as you're going through here. Do both, cause right now it doesn't matter. Try and see what you like the best. And then as you work into the blue, you can kind of decide where you want to land on that. So as I get up to the very top, I want to not worry about those top corners so much for a couple of reasons. The first reason, you don't really see a whole lot of it. And then secondly, I'm going to have blue up at the top, so I don't need that much white there. All right, I know you can't see this part. so. I've got a good amount of white from my line that I decided was my horizon line all the way up. Now we're going to do what I call the dirty dip. So that's where you take your big brush, you go into the paint that you want to go into, <laughs> and then dirty dip. I'm going to start with this dark blue, and then I don't know how well you can tell, but I'm pulling out from one of the corners, that way I have all of that clean paint left over, because I'm going to use that. And I'm going to start from the top. And I'm gonna kind of quickly work this in with sort of a heavier hand, so I'm pushing down a little bit harder. And what that's gonna do is sort of blend that blue into the white. So I'm gonna work into that white and blue. And then now I can see that it's changing that color, so what I'm gonna do is start to work this down. And if you do little crissy crosses, it's gonna give you this nice sort of, I'm gonna say fluffy background. And then for those of you that are kind of OCD and you like everything to be super clean, you can take nice long strokes. Going all the way across. So you can get two different skies by two really quick different um, techniques with the same brush. Either Christy Cross to get nice fluffy sky or a nice clean back and forth. I don't know why I always hold my breath when I do that, but I do, it's a thing. So remember to take a deep breath. I do that a few times. So now I've got a really light horizon line, which I'm gonna go ahead and darken in just a little bit, just so it's not one solid color. One solid color is really boring. I always like to have a mixture of different colors, um, unless I'm blocking something in and I'm gonna cover it up, which we're about to do. So we've got our sky. I decided where my sort of starter horizon line is, and then we blend it on canvas. There are two different techniques that you can use there, or both, whatever, it's your thing. I either did the crissy cross where you're kind of blending in, or you can go in nice horizontal strokes from one end of the canvas to the other to get a nice clean sort of gradient as you go up. The big thing for both of those is to not overdo it. Uh, there's this thing that I call noodling. Noodling is when you're done and you just keep working because you can. It's a lot of fun to blend two colors on canvas, and I could do that all day and be too super happy. But I'm going to go ahead and do another thing. It's called the artist lean. I'm going to lean back, take a good look at the whole thing compositionally. You can change anything that you want, but keep in mind you're going to cover like 90% of this. We've got a lot of trees and stuff to put in. So we've got this ground level here, 
and I want to just kind of block that in and then we're going to make a new horizon line which is actually sort of a tree line. So we're going to make one very large amount of purple and when we make this purple it's going to be really dark. So that's going to be kind of our new color like our, on our palette like the red and blue and yellow. So this will be our new sort of starter color and we'll use that for that very last color which is that darkest purple. So we're going to mix a color and then I'm going to take a little bit of that and mix a new color and then we're going to use that for our background. So the farthest layer of trees back is going to be our lightest color. Uh, the reason that I do that is called atmospheric perspective if you want to get real fancy but really I just call it a little haze. So I'm going to make a lot of a purple and it's going to be a little bit dark. Purple is a really fun color. Um, it can either be warm or it can be cool. So it can be like a almost magenta or it could be like a lavender. You can go either way but either way you're going to start with blue just because I've already got blue kind of on my brush here. And I'm going to take about two, I'm going to go three big scoops of blue and I've got this extra palette here. I've also got some extra ones kind of off to the side. And then I'm going to go in where the blue and the red meet because it's already kind of dirty there and I'm going to get one maybe two scoops of red and I'm going to start mixing this in. So it's going to look almost brown at first until you really start to mix it and then even though I want to have this to be in my darkest purple it's going to be really hard to see without adding a little bit of white. So I've done what I'm calling marbling the red into the blue so I've kind of mixed it in but I didn't really mix it in all the way. And now I'm going to go into a little edge of the white and grab just a little bit of white. And this is just going to make this so I can see it a little bit better. And also my blue is really thin, so adding a little bit of white to it is going to kind of thicken that up. So it's still kind of dark. I'm going to go a little more red because this is a pretty blue. And I'm going to keep adding a little bit of red till I get the color that I like. If you are in love with the color, I would maybe take a step back and add just a tiny little bit more white to it because when your paint dries, acrylic paint is going to dry just a little bit darker than what you see when it's wet. So I don't know, science is weird, it's a thing, but it happens. So what you see while you're mixing that color is going to be just a little bit darker. I like this. I'm going to go in one more time of red just to make sure I've got a nice purple color. And then I'm going to call it good because I'm going to end up with a really pretty plate and not enough paint. So let's see, I've got this very dark purple here and I've got a whole bunch of it. So what I need though is a very, very light purple. So I'm actually going to scrape as much paint as I can off of this big old brush and use what just stays on there. Let's see, I'm scraping all this off to the side of the plate. Give it a little jiggle, get some of that out of there. And there's still so much paint on here. So I'm going to go in and grab a big old scoop of white and put it off to the side here. I'm going to go one more just because. When I'm mixing color, I like to mix more paint than I think I need because no matter how hard I try, I can never get the same color twice. It's always nice to have paint left over. It's a real difficult situation to have to try to make the same color twice. So here's my lavender color. It's very light. I think it's still really blue. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take a little more red into my original color. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to scrape this off because there's a lot of paint here. And then I'm just going to go into my blue, or my blue, it was too blue and I want it to be a little more purple. So now I'm just kind of mixing this back over. That's way more purple. And it got too dark. So before I go into the noodling phase, I want to call this good. I took a scoop of white and I just went off to the corner over here. And I can use that stuff later, so I'm not super worried about making too much of the this color. I don't need a bunch of my first set of trees. I don't need a whole bunch of color here. So I'm going to scrape this off again. And this is where we're going to have fun with our sort of 
<laughs> I want to call it stabby stroke. It's tapping or stippling. I like to call it the stabby stroke so you can get a little bit of that anxiety out. I'm going to go across here and I want to make a not straight line as we kind of go through. Um, I want to say bushy, but as I'm doing this, I'm going to just try to keep in mind that I've got that white down to a certain point. So that's my lowest point of my tree line that I want to do as I go through here. So my bushes are going to be straight on stabby stroke. So it's sort of straight on and I'm going to keep tapping. You can see why it's super cool to have not mixed your colors in all the way. So I'm tapping all the way on. I'm going to go all the way across, but I don't want it to be flat like that. And I know that I've got more layers of trees and stuff to do. So I want to make sure that my trees go up. Maybe I'm going to say close to halfway up your um, canvas here. And I'm going to tap around, make a nice uneven sort of situation here. And as I'm going through, I want to take harder stabs, <laughs> harder taps are going to really put that paint onto the canvas. And then real light taps are going to give you that nice haphazardy, open, fluffy tree edge. So this is nice, stabby, tappy stroke. I'm going to go all the way across. I'm going to lean back. Make sure I go high enough on both sides here. And then once I get this top part down, I'm just going to go ahead and block all this in because I'm going to cover a lot of it. So all I'm trying to do, I like that texture, so I'm going to keep sort of doing that tappy stroke. And I'm just trying to cover the canvas. So I'm working into all those little nooks and crannies. You could sweep through and then tap over it. I'm just trying to save me some time. All right, so now at this point, your whole canvas should be covered with paint. <laughs> Almost there. And now you can see why I said that we're going to use a sort of rattier brush. All right, I have a new tree line. I'm doing a couple little light taps just so that line isn't super duper defined. And it's a lot darker than my original one, but as long as I make every other color just a little bit darker than the one that I started with, this is our first set. So we're going to do two more sets. This next one, I can use that medium color, maybe make it a little bit darker. So this one here, I'm going to make a medium purple color. I'm going to do that. And then we'll use this flat kind of purple color that we mixed at the before our original purple color. Uh, we'll use that for that very last step. That's that really dark contrast. So we're going to do this next layer of kind of almost trees. But before we do that, I want to put just a few little trees sort of hinted in the background there. So I'm not going to use my big brush for that. I'm going to throw that in my water cup and I'm going to grab my little brush with my small brush and a little bit of white paint here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white. This is a good way to start out how to do trees. We're gonna do two more layers of these. These are kind of hinty trees, so I'm just gonna do little wisps of lines. Trees are cool, especially these ones, because they're not straight lines. I don't wanna do any straight lines, and then the only thing that I'm gonna kind of try to remember is that as long as it starts out a little bit thicker at the bottom, and then it gets thin at the top, it's tree. So, anytime I'm starting something new, I'm always gonna try to start it somewhere that doesn't matter. So over in this little corner here, somewhere in the middle of your tree section, I'm going to do sort of a not straight line. That's a little squiggle. It doesn't look like a tree. So we're going to make it a tree now by turning this little squiggle into a Y. I'm going to take this other one and do a little squiggle going up. And now I'm going to call it a tree. If I thicken out that bottom section, hey, look, it's a tree. So I'm going to do maybe two or three on either side just to sort of practice for yourself. And then the ones that matter are the ones right in the middle. So I'm going to do a few of them. As I'm doing this, I'm not going to push down very hard. And the more that paint sort of blends in to that background color, the more it's going to be a nice hazy just hint of trees in the background. So when I'm going through here, I'm a little bit OCD. So I'm really trying not to make a pattern. And I'm not 
gonna care about placement so much because we're gonna cover a lot of these up but I'm gonna keep them sort of in the middle section of my tree line I did that with my small brush and some white paint but it mixed in really well to this sort of middle section I recommend trying somewhere off to the side that we're gonna end up covering um, and then working into the middle as you start to get more comfortable I'm gonna throw my small brush in the water because we're gonna talk about this second set which I mean to me is really our first set of trees. I want to switch back to my big brush. I don't want super amount, a super amount of water in here, so I'm gonna grab my big brush with my paper towel or rag and kind of give a little squeeze and a little shift. That's gonna pull any of that extra paint out there just because I had a ton of paint there. We're gonna mix a new color and I don't want a new color to kind of come through as I'm painting. Also, um, I don't want too much water on here because we're going to do nice light taps to get the big billowy trees at the top. So we have that color that I decided was too dark. I'm going to use that now, but now it's too light for me. So I'm going to take another scoop of my darkest purple and go into now my medium color. If you didn't do what I did, great, good for you. Take a little scoop of your dark purple and a big old scoop of your white and make a new medium color. I want to make sure that it's going to stand out between my first and my last purples that we're going to use here. So this is where we're sort of thinking ahead of time. I've got my first one here. Here's my second one. I know it's going to be a little bit darker when it dries. So I'm going to go a little darker here because this one here is very dark. I've got some room to play with this. So I've got I'm going to go a little darker just to make sure. And before I start noodling on mixing colors, I'm going to call this my next set of trees color. Technical terms. All right, I'm scraping this off because I've got a bunch of paint up in the bristles. It's going to dry, so I'm just going to kind of scrape it down there. All right, I've got a whole bunch of purple still on here. Eh, it's all right. If you think you've got too much, you can just sort of tap. So do that little stabby, just sort of on the can on your uh, palette, and that'll pull your bristles back away from each other. And if you've got any, if you have too much paint on your brush, it'll sort of help push that paint either back so you can use it a little bit later, or get it off that brush altogether. So this second set of trees, before I put that in, I want to sort of make what I'm going to call now my newest horizon line. And that way I'm going to have these little ends of these trees sort of covered up. I wouldn't try too hard, but also it's just going to give me a little more contrast going on in this bottom section. So it's not just sort of a flat color. With this, I'm going to do the ground cover. So with ground cover, I'm going to use just the very tip of my brush. So I'm going to hold it very lightly to my canvas and just do little taps. As I go through, I don't want it to be straight across. I'm not going to go all the way across. I'm going to do these little sort of mounds. As I do them, I want to do a couple that are go off the corner there. There we go. So I'm going to do little mounds and I want them to sort of meet in the middle. That's going to set me up for that nice highlight that kind of zigzags in the middle. So I'm gonna start on the outsides, so I'm working through sort of any kinks. I'm gonna add these little sort of rounded curvy strokes or curvy shapes because I'm tapping. I'm not gonna do an actual stroke. I'm tapping straight on, but I'm gonna give my wrist just a little bit of a curve as I go. So I've got those little mounds there. I'm not trying to cover up everything that's inside of my that background color that we kind of tapped in before. I like the texture showing through. This is just giving it a little bit of story so I know where my horizon line is. You kind of can see what's going on. There might be something going on back in this little bit of the forest, but you know it doesn't just drop off. So there's stuff going on back there. This gives us a second horizon line. Okay, so I don't want to do leaves where I don't know I'm going to have trees, so I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to put this in the water because I've got a lot of paint that I can use on here and I don't want too much water on my brush when we do our leaves that we're going to kind of lightly tap in. So I'm going to set my big brush down 
and switch over to my small brush. So it's not in the water, it's just sort of sat off to the side. And I'm gonna try to work quickly to get through these uh, first set of, I guess our second set of trees so that I can get to that brush before it dries too much. All right, so I'm using that medium color, so the one we just mixed, and I've got my small brush and I'm gonna do a real set of trees. I'm gonna put two trees on each side and I wanna leave this middle section kind of open. So that's gonna be where the light's coming in. So I don't want anything to be in the way there. So I'm gonna keep this sort of middle hands width open. And I'm gonna do two trees on each side. Again, I'm sort of OCD and I wanna try to make sure that I don't do the exact same placement with the exact same trees. So I'm gonna go in, I wanna have one off to the side. And this is always gonna be my first one because I can cover it up with that last tree. And I'm going to go all the way up with a nice, not straight line. It's as thin as I can. I'm going to do just a little bit of water into this paint, and it's going to help me move this paint around. You'll be able to see the difference. So this kind of broke, broke away and came back. If I take a little scoop of that medium purple and then some water, and I'm really going to mix that paint into the water like I'm mixing a new color. And then it kind of makes an ink-like consistency. So now when I run through, I'm going to make my branch, let's see, I'm going to have it split off here and then go right off the canvas. It's a lot easier to sort of decide where that spot is. And it makes those lines a little more clean. So I watered down a little bit of that medium purple. I made one line. I added a little Y to it. I'm going to add another one that goes right into the middle section and trails away. And to really give it something to put some leaves on, I'm gonna do one more right there. Maybe one more branch going right up and off the canvas there. So that's my first one. I know I wanna stay away from this middle section, but I'm gonna come real close and I'm gonna go right into this area here. So I'm gonna start right off the canvas and go up, kinda of give it a little curve, and I'll just let this one trail away. That's my first uh, branch, so it's a weird squiggly line. I didn't have enough water in my paint there, so I'm going to go back through and kind of darken that in, and it trails away before it even hits that top. So I'm trying pretty hard not to make the same tree, so that one started way down here. I'm going to start way up here and make this second arm that branches out and goes off that way. I'm getting pretty close to that middle section, so I'm going to pull this one back over. I'm going to call that tree good. It doesn't matter if it doesn't have a lot going on because even if you don't have a branch there, you can put some leaves. This is just sort of a base to give it an illusion that there's a lot of trees going on. So I've got two trees. They're both the same sort of thickness though. I want to make sure I'm going to kind of do that lean back. And I'm going to make this one just a little bit thicker because I feel like it's a little closer than that back one is. It ends farther down. That makes it closer. And now they're definitely not the same tree and they're not in the same spot. All right, I got two more trees to do and then we'll do some nice leaves. This one, it started really close to the middle. So I'm gonna do this other one kind of farther back. And this one's just sort of a smaller tree. There it is, nice simple small tree. It's a little bit sparse. There we go. Okay, one more tree, and then we're gonna use that same purple and do, oh, I'm gonna make this one go right off the edge because that's where my hand ended up going. And then I'm gonna bring it back this way with a branch. There we go. So now I've got two trees on either side. I'm gonna make the one closest to the edge on this side a little bit thicker, just so that I'm not with the same sort of tree. Bam, there we go. Just a nice quick little thick going down. Uh, these are gonna be mostly covered, so it's just a base to let me know where my leaves are gonna go, which I'm gonna do right now with my biggest brush. I've got that big brush that I set off to the side. I wanna give it a little bit of a tap to bring that paint back to life. If it did dry a little bit, you can grab a little more paint. 
But for the most part, if you're like me, you've got so much paint on here. So I'm just giving a little tap. Now what we're gonna do are our, um, our prettier clusters of trees, clusters of leaves, that's a better term for it. So we're gonna do clusters of leaves. I'm gonna do these a little more delicate than down below. And I wanna make these shapes, so I wanna do them a little more flat on the bottom section, and then I'm gonna kinda have it nice and fluffy right across the top there. So I'm gonna go a little bit straight on, but as I'm coming through here and I go to those edges, I'm gonna tilt it down like we did down in here to just get a nice little edge. So covering, I'm gonna go straight on, and then I want, blah, when I get to a spot that I wanna sort of trail away, I'm gonna use that edge to do that little bit of a trail. So I wanna do a couple of shapes. I've got a nice big shape there. I'm gonna try a little harder to cover the little ends or anything that I don't like in the trees. So I didn't like the top of that one. I don't really like the top of this one either. And that one. So really, I didn't like the top of any of those. Oops, wrong paint. I'm gonna scrape that off. Get the right paint, which is that medium purple. And I'm going through here. So as I'm going through, I'm not gonna try to cover all of those uh, branches and stuff that we put in because otherwise it's sort of wasted energy. But I wanna cover, again, anything that I don't like. And then these outsides, I want the edges to be a little bit thicker than this middle section here. This is a real tall tree, so it might have just a couple of branches kind of trailing away there. There we go. I feel better about that now. Okay, this side has lots of leaves. I didn't cover everything, so you can still see some of that sky in the background but there's quite a bit in that top corner that's covered. So I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna do a few clusters, trying not to make a pattern. And I don't really want my trees over here to touch. So the trees on my left and my right, I'm not gonna make them touch. They can get real close here. And then those edges. I want that corner to be pretty covered. I'm gonna grab this so it doesn't fly across the room here. All right, so I've got a good amount of leaves. This is my medium purple. And you can still see some of my trees. I can see that background pretty well there. And those top edges, they're pretty covered. So we've got a new horizon line. I can still see those trees in the back corner, but I've got a tree pretty close to that sort of middle section. And I've got two trees on each side. We're gonna go ahead and talk about our last set of trees. Um, actually, we are gonna talk about how to mix green. We're gonna do that first. I think that's gonna be better. So I did a whole lot of colors. This would be a good time to take a break also, clean your water out because we made a whole lot of purple and if you've got a super, super dirty set of water, you can clean that out and uh, we can make our nice yellow color. That'll be nice and bright. So I need another palette. I've got plates right over here. <coughs> Maybe. All right, ta-da! So I'm gonna use a new plate, but I'm not gonna rinse out my water. I'm just gonna make sure I'm cleaning out my brush really well. I have a trick to clean your brushes out really well. So I've got a big brush, it's super duper dirty, it's got paint all the way up to the metal. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna shove it down to the bottom of my cup, and I'm gonna scrub it around like I'm trying to clean the bottom of the cup. You are, it'll save you time later, I promise. But what I'm trying to do is really get that paint out of my bristles, all the way up to where the bristles hit the metal. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna grab my paper towel or my rag and really give it a squeeze way up by the metal. I've still got paint up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off and give it another go. Starting to clean it out. All right, again, so I've got my big old brush. I'm gonna smash it down at the bottom of my cup. I'm gonna scrub it around like I'm trying to clean the bottom of that cup. I'm trying to get the paint out of 
the bristles that are way up close to the metal part. So once I've taken that out of the water, I'm going to grab my paper towel or my rag and give it a nice good squeeze. And I like to kind of shift it back and forth there up by the metal. Now it's nice and clean and I'm ready to go. So we're going to make uh, a nice sort of grassy green color. That's going to be done with a whole bunch of yellow and just a little bit of blue and then some white to kind of lighten it up to the color that we want. The thing about yellow, yellow and purple are complementary colors, which means if they mix together, they're going to make brown. Um, I'm going to take my nice, nice clean brush. So if you end up making brown, throw that color away and start a new color. I've got my yellow here and I'm going to take pretty much all of it. It's maybe one or two big scoops here. It went into the blue. I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. So I've got a big scoop of yellow, about a scoop and a half. And I'm going to go in and get just a little bit of blue. I'm going to get even less because I know that I've got some already on there. And I'm going to mix this in. I'm going to kind of marble it. And then grab one scoop of white just because it's going to be a dark color. So I've got a little bit of white here. And a nice green color. I think this is a little dark for what I'm going for, so I'm going into white one more time. And before I start to noodle, I'm going to call this good. So, green. I took a big old scoop of yellow, a little scoop of blue, and then I'm going to say a big scoop of white, just to kind of lighten that up there. And we're going to use this to make our bushes and some of our sort of highlights to our trees. Okay, I'm kind of going to scrape off some of this paint because I've got so much of it. You can see it dripping down my brush, so I'm just going to kind of drip off some of that water. Okay. These ones are a little bit different. So these tree tips are going to come out a little bit farther when I do the green, just to have a nice kind of fresh bit of green. And while I was mixing, my purple dried a pretty good amount. If it's still super wet, take a little bit longer of a break and then come back into it. I'm going to do a whole bunch of green sort of right on the edges of these uh, leaf clusters that are really close to the middle, just on this last set of trees that we did, not the first set. So on our medium purple trees, I'm going to do those little taps. So this one's going to be like I'm doing the delicate edge every time. I'm going to give a little tap right on sort of that edge. I went up and down, but I'm going to go a little farther on the bottom and that one's going to touch. So I'm going to bring it down a little farther. So I'm going across the bottom a little and I'm going to go up to top just a little bit too. I'm going to pick a few spots here to add a little more green to. Coming through over here, I might add another one there. So I've got some highlights right on this middle part here. I'm going to go a little farther and do that. So it looks really weird when it's just right there. So I'm going to do just a few little spots back in here. I'm going to decide that's like a peak there. And then over here, oh, that's pretty close. I'm going to put one there. Maybe a few little spots there. Let's see, I'm doing little artist lanes now before I get too crazy with the top, I'm going to start noodling really soon. I'm going to move into the bottom one more just because my OCD heart makes it, makes it feel better. Okay, so we've got this little weird path thing down in here. I'm not going to worry about where those trees are because this is a nice highlight and then we've got a last set of trees to put on that's going to kind of pull everything forward. So as I'm going through, I'm going to do a nice sort of zigzag. As I go down, I'm only going to do the very middle section with this bit of green. A few little spots can come out into sort of this middle area, but I don't want any greens kind of on the edges there. So I'm going to do a nice light tap off to the edge and I'm going to zigzag up and then come down. Do a few more here and I'll do an artist lean and see how I feel. I'm going to do a little bit more right up the top. There we go. A 
Now I've got some nice, nice green. I might throw a second layer over a few of these spots that were kind of thin. That yellow is sort of a thinner yellow, so it's not a very thick paint. And if it's super see-through, if yours is as well, let it dry a little bit. You can take a second coat and then move on. Okay, before this dries, I wanna do one more set of all of this little highlight with a dirty brush. So we're gonna dirty dip our big brush into a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna go into the white paint that's already dirty with green. And I'm gonna do just the tips of these and then across sort of the bottom. So just the tip and across the bottom. <laughs> there we go. And this is giving it a nice, nice bright highlight. If I get some cleaner white, it's gonna be a little more bright, there it is. So I'm pushing very, very lightly. And I'm gonna go across, I'm gonna say most of my little highlight clusters, but not all of them. So now it's a little bit lighter in this middle section. Oh, I got purple in that one. I'm gonna do just a little bit right there where it's a little dark. There we go. So now it's bright, right in that middle section or what my trees are calling the middle section now. And we're gonna move into the bottom area. So when I do these highlights, these are gonna be the last ones that we do in that middle sort of meadowy spot. So I really wanna make sure that I have a cleaner brush and I've got so much paint on here, it changed the color when I did the trees. So I'm not gonna wash it out. I don't want all that water on the brush. I'm just gonna grab my paper towel or my rag and do that whole drying thing. I'm just gonna kinda pull some extra paint off. It's also gonna pull the little tips of my brush together. And now when I go into the white, I'm gonna get just a little bit right on, I'm trying to figure out where to put this, right on the edge of that clean white. And now what I'm gonna do is just in the middle, I'm gonna do those little taps and I'm holding my breath, so breathe, and zigzagging it back and forth. So I am using that green that I had before, but I can make new ones if I decide I want to. So those little taps, sort of kind of rounding out from the middle. There we go. And now I've got this big highlight right here. It doesn't look super duper contrasty because we're gonna put that darkest color on and the darker this color is, the more contrast that green is gonna look. I am gonna use my small brush to do that. And I really wanna wash this brush out because we're gonna do purple from the for the rest of the time here. So before you do this, make sure you get a nice good artist lean. You've got enough green down that you want those little highlights are right on the edge and then across the bottom. And then we've got a nice bright white, a little more in the middle. So you can still see some of that green down underneath, but it's mostly got a lot of that brightish white in that middle section. So I'm gonna clean this out and leave it in there and take my small brush. We're gonna do our last set of trees. So I'm gonna do one on my right and then two on the left just to make sure that it's not the same on both sides. I'm gonna take my small brush, but like I did with my first set of trees there, I'm gonna do a little bit of water and thin out some of this last purple color, so the darker purple color. I've got a little water, watered it down. I'm gonna decide where I want my trees, so this is a good time to cover up anything that you just haven't been able to unsee through the whole painting. And I'm gonna start off the canvas with all of these. So this one, let's see, I'm gonna start pretty close to the edge, but then I'm gonna go up and let it trail in. And it's not gonna go all the way off. I'm gonna do a little more water here. So I'm gonna go all the way up and just end it right there. Moving over, let's bring, let's see, I'm gonna bring it from here over. Throw one more guy on there, just for good measure. There's my first tree. I'm gonna move over and do another one. Let's see, right here. 
and it's gonna go up and all the way off just because I feel like it's a good time to. I keep adding water into my paint. I've got paper plates as my palette, so the water is kind of absorbing into that plate. So going through to darken that spot up there. And this one's gonna have, let's see, it's gonna peek out and have just one little branch that goes right into that middle area. And then I'll bring one up and go through that big white spot. All right, so I've got two trees over here. But I feel like this one just needs to be thicker. It seems like a big, big tree. So I'm going to thicken this one out. And when I do that, I'm thickening out that main tree trunk. But then I, you can kind of tell I'm going up just that first part of the branch. Just to sort of thicken out that first part and then not the end because I don't want to mess with that want more than I need to because the more you kind of mess with the thin line, the thicker it gets. Um, Alright, so I've got two trees on one side. I'm going to go over and do one tree on this other side. So this one, I'm going to start kind of right here in the middle. And then I'm going to move towards the middle just a little bit more before it goes out and drifts away. When I go into this, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm just sort of letting my hand do whatever it wants. And if it starts to get out of hand, try to correct it. Okay, so I'm moving in to the middle just a little bit there. And I'm going to give it one let's see, I'm trying to look at this tree over here and not make branches in the same areas. So let's go down. I'm going to make this one split off pretty quickly. Seems like it needs a branch. All right, thickening this one out just a little bit here. Going up just the beginning of those branches. Kind of blends that branch out a little bit. And I'm going to call this my last set of trees. So I'm going to do more leaves. I'm trying to make sure that that big brush is really, really cleaned out. And then I don't want very much water at all, so I'm going to do that whole squeeze trick. Oh, I got a bunch of... <laughs> I tried to squeeze right where I did the same thing with my green paint. So I'm rinsing my brush out one more time. <laughs> Giving it that squeeze and a little twist there. And now I've got a nice clean brush. It's kind of dry here. I'm nice, I'm kind of flicking the ends because the more frayed it is, the better my little leaf clusters are gonna be. And I'm using that darkest purple. So darkest purple, I'm getting just a little bit here. And these clusters, they're gonna cover mostly sort of this upper middle corner sections, but I wanna make sure that I've got a little bit sort of in this middle area without covering up too much of my green. So asking a lot I know I've got just a little bit of that dark purple I'm tapping on my palette to make sure I don't have too much I'm gonna start somewhere that doesn't matter so I know I'm gonna have a bunch up here so I can start tapping I'm gonna kind of go through and decide where it's gonna trail away and the trailing away is using that edge just letting it sort of drift I've got it so this tree goes all the way up off the top so there might be a little bit of branch right there. And then just so it's not a weird line going off the canvas, I'm gonna do that. All right, I don't like the end of that branch. I'm gonna go on that branch too, and I'm gonna kind of zigzag. Give myself a few of these smaller clusters as I work my way down. And I'm gonna do just sort of the ends right over here. Give it a new little peek there. There we go. All right. So this side has two trees, which means there would be more leaves. I'm gonna go ahead and thicken a lot of this in. I'm trying to go through and sort of cover up some spots but I also want to be able to see just little bits of that sky kind of peeking through there. So I've got little bits of sky sort of peeking through. Before I start to do that noodling, I'm going to move over to the other side. 
So this one, I know I want stuff right here. Coming through, I don't want to cover that up because I like it. So I'm going to drift this way and then I'll go into right there. There it is. All right. So we're going to pretend land. There's a tree off here somewhere and I'm going to do some leaves coming in this way. And that little bit of that branch that I put in earlier gets a little bit of leaves. So I'm pushing around, trying to leave the spots that I like open, cover up any of those spots that you really don't like. And I want to make sure those outside edges and top corner are just a little bit darker than the rest to make sure we've got that contrast going on. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit of an artist lean here. I'm going to put a few little bits of branch here and clean up a few of these. There we go. All right, so we've got one more thing to do. I'm going to go along this edge. And I want to put in just a little bit of sort of bushes and that's going to cover up uh, any of this little corner like I didn't paint that corner for some reason. But I'm really trying to cover the bottoms of my trees without cutting into the middle of my little meadow there. So I'm going to start up a little bit high on the edges and I'm going to do a nice big round just like I was doing on those uh, lower sections. Kind of roundy strokes going in so it drifts off in the middle. I'm going to use that same dark purple. I'm going in. A little bit higher on the edge here and then I want to make sure that it's not like a solid line going across kind of goes up and down nice uneven little lines here strokes taps and then it drifts away before I get into that little bit of meadow so on the other side all I want to do is make sure it's not the same sort of shape so I want to make it a little bit lower covering that corner and I'm going to move in and let it drift away before it gets into the middle. All right. So the last thing that you should always do with your painting uh, before you decide if you like it or not is sleep on it, not like on it. But if you think that you don't like it, a lot of times you're just too close to it. So take a step back, but also go away from it for a little while. Don't look at it overnight and then come back and decide if you like it or not. I love this painting. I'm going to keep it. It's going to go up somewhere. Um, it's probably going to be given to my mom. Um, before I sign it though, I'm going to make sure there's not anything else that I want to do to it. This is a, uh, extra time to do any of that finesse lap kind of stuff. And then when you sign it, there are two ways to sign your work and then there's a way to cheat. So the first way, and I'm just going to show you on a plate, I'm going to fold this over so I have a nice two sides to work with here. And you can use, the small brush is what I'm going to use for both ways, but the first way, I want to use a little bit of watered down paint. I'm going to do red, because that's where my brush kind of fell. And I'm really going to water this down. So the more water, the better for this situation. If it's super duper watered down, then it's going to be like a watercolor. So find that fun line of too much water versus not enough. But I'm looking for sort of an ink-like consistency. And then I would recommend always trying it on a piece of paper or something because you never know what's going to happen right in the first bit. But I'm going to go in and give it a little signature. That watered down paint is going to push that paint around a lot better than when it starts to dry out and sort of frays around. So it's just sort of on your preference, I guess. But I like to water down my paint and then go in and sign. Also, the second way to do this, uh, it takes a little more time, but there are some people that think they've got a little more control with it. You can use the back end of your brush, so the wood bit. If you want to do this this way, what you're going to want to do is get that little end of the brush, but you're going to get a big old glob of paint. So I've got a big bead of paint, and I'm not actually going to carve into the paint unless you've got a whole lot of stuff going on your canvas. The carving into it's not going to do a whole lot. I'm going to glide that bead of paint across my canvas and that's going to give me a nice sort of bubbly line and then once you've got that paint down you can kind of go through and push it around 
give yourself a little bit cleaner of a line. Uh, I don't have the patience to do this. You can see I'm already losing it. I got one letter out. Looks okay. So the first way is your small brush, watered down paint. Always give it a try on an extra piece of paper or scratch paper. Um, and then a nice light hand and give yourself a nice fluid stroke through the whole thing. The second way to do it is that back end. So you're going to use the wood bit and a big old bubble of paint or a bead of paint. You're going to glide that bead of paint across. And then if you want to kind of clean it up afterwards, the paint's already on there. You kind of drag through that. Okay. So we blended on canvas. We did that little stabby or stipple motion a couple of different ways. The way you hold your brush makes a big, huge difference. I hope you had a whole lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. We made a whole lot of color. Um, my hands are covered in paint. I hope yours are too. And I hope that you enjoyed it. So if you did like it and you'd like to leave me a tip and keep me going, I do have a PayPal me account. I will leave a link down below. So if you wouldn't mind tipping a dollar or 10, uh, I would highly, I would greatly appreciate it and thank you in advance. Any donation or tip of $10 or more, and I will send you a link or a PDF of my coloring book, so a printable version of a coloring book. It's got about 12, 14, 14-ish pages of uh, mermaids and cats, mermaids as cats, and dogs as mermaids. You know, you get it. So if you enjoyed it, I do have a PayPal me. I'll leave the link down in the description. And anything that you would like to leave, I greatly appreciate. It'll keep me going here. And then if you want to leave a comment, let me know if there's anything that you'd like to learn. If you want me to show you something, I can always go through it with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you next week.